Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use common logging and log4net together with the Couchbase.NET SDK. I know logging isn't terribly exciting, but when you run into problems and need help, it's important to be able to turn on logging and gather as much information as possible. If you've not used a logging framework before, it can be a bit overwhelming. So if you just go to nuget.org or .netlogging.com and search for logging, you're going to be presented with a lot of choices. You know, should I use Lupe, shall I use nlog, log for net, enterprise library, and so on and so on. Fortunately, there's another project out there called Common Logging, and that aims to create a common interface between popular logging frameworks. And here's the website for it right there. The Couchbase.NET SDK supports common logging, which means you can plug in the logger of your choice. So I'm going to show you an example of using log for net, but other logging tools are going to be similar. So first, I whipped up an ASP.NET application it exercises the Couchbase .NET SDK with both key value operations and nickel operations. Now all this code is available for you on GitHub, so see the link in the video notes. If I click key value, it's going to do two things. Uh, an operation to create a new document and an operation to get that document back out for display. So if I refresh this page, it's going to create a new random document each time I refresh. And if I go over to nickel, it's going to run a select query to display all the documents I've created. So if I hit refresh, it's going to be the same three documents every time I refresh. That's all this app does. So let's enable logging so we can see what the Couchbase SDK is doing. The first thing to notice is that the Couchbase net client right here in NuGet has a dependency on common logging. So when I installed Couchbase net client with NuGet, I got common logging with it. So the next thing I need to do is install a common logging adapter for log for net And I chose this one, common logging, log for net universal. When I installed this, it installs log for net as a dependency. And so once I have those two things installed, I'm ready to go. So let's go over to web config here. And we'll start with config sections. So I need a section group for common logging, which can just be called common and then I have a, a section in there called logging and then I need a section for log for net I call that log for net now down in this common section right here I'll configure the log for net factory adapter if you're using NuGet then this part is probably already done for you and then finally I need to configure log for net so down here the log for net section now, Log4Net has a rich configuration system, which is covered by their documentation, so I'm not going to go into it too much here. I'm just going to have it append to a text file, and so I'm using the file appender, and I'll have it set a file value here to a log file location property, and this is a token that's going to be replaced later on. You'll see that, and more on that in a bit. And the other thing to point out here is this layout and then the conversion pattern here, and this is basically a template of what log is going to write to a text file. And I put an extra new line in here just to make it a little nicer to read for this demo. Okay, so once we've got the web config set up, the last thing to do is to go over to the global ASAX file. And right inside of application start, I can say log config, XML configurator, configure, and that will kick off log You can also do this in the assembly info CS file. Another thing I want to do is that token in the web config file, I want to actually define a value for it, and it was called log file location. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to uh, set up a text file that's in a log folder inside my web application. Probably not a good idea in practice um, because you don't want your log file exposed to uh, the, the, the public via web uh, application. But for purposes of a demo, it's a really a convenient place for it. So once I've done all these things, I'll go ahead and compile and launch the website again. Once the website is running, logging is actually taking place right now. So if I go to the key value again, and I'm going to refresh this a couple more times, and I go over to nickel again, I'll refresh this a couple more times. So if I go to this log tab, what's showing here is just the output of the text file. I'm putting it right into a web page here. And let's scroll down a little bit and see what's going on. So there's a lot of configuration stuff going on here with Couchbase, which is what we'd expect, setting up the cluster, 
setting up a connection pool, and uh, there's probably some V-bucket configuration stuff in here. Those are all sort of details that are interesting for debugging purposes or for support purposes. And then if I keep going, I'll eventually see the place where we started actually doing a key value operation. So sending an add command to Couchbase here. So if we rewind the video, you should probably see this GUID here that was generated for one of the documents. And a couple more times, uh, here's, a, here's a git, actually pulls that document back out by the key. And there's another add, another git here, and another add, another git here, and so on. And so those are the three key value operations uh, that we used. And then uh, down here, the last thing we did was run a nickel query. So you can see that we sent a query off and the query was received. Did that three times total. So all that stuff is being logged there. It's as easy as that. So the next time you have a problem with Couchbase or anything else that uses common logging, you can just hook up Log4Net or your favorite logging tool and see what might be going wrong behind the scenes. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to check out blog.couchbase.com for more great .NET content. Thank you.